Hyperkalemia is a serious electrolyte imbalance that requires prompt intervention. Elevated potassium levels in the blood can lead to life-threatening complications, particularly cardiac arrhythmias. Stabilization of the cardiac membrane. The first step in managing hyperkalemia is stabilizing the cardiac membrane to prevent arrhythmias. Administer 10 milliliters of 10% calcium gluconate intravenously over two minutes. Continuous monitoring of the electrocardiogram is essential during this process. Calcium gluconate works by stabilizing the cardiac membrane and reducing the risk of arrhythmias caused by elevated potassium levels. Shifting potassium intracellularly. Once the cardiac membrane is stabilized, the next step is to shift potassium from the extracellular space into the cells. To achieve this, Administer 10 units of regular insulin intravenously along with 50 milliliters of 50% dextrose. Monitor blood glucose levels every hour for 4 hours to prevent hypoglycemia. Insulin promotes the uptake of potassium into cells, thereby reducing serum potassium levels. In addition to insulin, nebulize 10 to 20 milligrams of salbutamol in 4 milliliters of saline over 10 minutes. Salbutamol is a beta agonist that also facilitates the movement of potassium into cells. These interventions work synergistically to lower potassium levels in the bloodstream. Correction of acidosis. Metabolic acidosis can exacerbate hyperkalemia by promoting the release of potassium from cells. To correct acidosis, administer 1 to 2 milliequivalents per kilogram of sodium bicarbonate intravenously. Sodium bicarbonate increases the extracellular pH, which helps shift potassium into cells and reduces its concentration in the blood. Promotion of potassium excretion. For patients with preserved renal function and volume overload, administer 40 to 80 milligrams of furosemide intravenously. Furosemide is a loop diuretic that enhances urinary potassium excretion. This step is particularly important in patients who are fluid overloaded, as it helps reduce both potassium levels and excess fluid. Cation exchange resins. Another method to promote potassium excretion is through the use of cation exchange resins. Administer 20 grams of sodium polystyrene sulfonates orally. This medication facilitates potassium excretion through the gastrointestinal tract by exchanging sodium for potassium. It is particularly useful in patients who cannot tolerate other treatments or require long-term management. Hemodialysis as a last resort. If hyperkalemia persists despite the above interventions, hemodialysis is indicated. Hemodialysis is highly effective in rapidly removing excess potassium from the bloodstream. This step is reserved for severe cases or when other measures have failed to adequately lower potassium levels. Monitoring and follow-up. Throughout treatment, repeat laboratory testing and continuous electrocardiogram monitoring are essential. These measures help assess the patient's response to therapy and guide adjustments as needed. Monitoring blood glucose levels hourly for four hours after insulin administration is particularly important to prevent hypoglycemia. Conclusion. This protocol provides a systematic approach to managing hyperkalemia. Each step addresses a specific mechanism to stabilize the patient and prevent complications. Prompt recognition and treatment of hyperkalemia are vital to improving patient outcomes. Regular monitoring ensures that therapy remains effective and safe throughout the course of treatment. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comment section.